and cosmology has become a very precise empirical science over the last 20 years. Before that, it was very crude, and now, with, especially with satellites, uh, uh, observatories, we've got me on it. That the observed positive mass energy density of the universe, that is measured, is, is exactly equal to, within experimental errors, of course, but almost exactly equal uh, to the critical density at which, at which the positive kinetic energy, the energy of motion of, of the bodies in the universe, and the energy that's associated with their mass, is exactly balanced by the negative gravitational potential energy, the potential energy due to the gravitational force between them. And this amazingly cancels, as if the total energy of the universe were zero. But certainly what this means is that there was no energy required to produce the universe. The universe has, uh, did not require any energy uh, to come into existence. So there was no outside force necessary to produce that energy. Now, uh, there was another cosmological prediction. It was once thought that the second law of thermodynamics, this is the second law, which I talked about the first law, this is the second law of thermodynamics must have been violated at the creation. Because the second law of thermodynamics is the law that says that the disorder or entropy of the universe has to increase with time. That if you produce a little bit of order here, you have to compensate that by tossing some disorder off someplace else. So if you're going to organize the Earth into a complex system as that it is, in doing so, there had to be a loss of, of entropy to the, the rest of the universe. Now, this was a good argument at one time. When the universe was thought to be a firmament, as it's supposed to be in the Bible, uh, then, then that universe had to come from an earlier, more orderly state than it is in now. If it had to be more orderly, then that order had to be produced by some outside force that most people associate with God, although it doesn't have to necessarily be God. It doesn't have, certainly doesn't have to be a Christian God or a Muslim God or a Jewish God. Uh, and then there's nothing in that that requires uh, any particular, that favors any particular type of God, but except for a God who is a creator that was required at this time. And this was a good argument. This was a good argument up until about 1920, when it was discovered that the universe is expanding. And since the universe is expanding, this means that there's increasingly more room for order to form as the, as the universe uh, goes on. Let me give you an example to try to, I know I can tell what I get in the way there. Uh, I, get a, I get the light in my eyes. Uh, the, let me give you an example of how this works. Suppose that you were, uh, you cleaned your house once a week, and what you did was, was toss all the rubbish out the window into your yard. And you did this every week. Well, eventually, your yard would be filled with, with rubbish, and you wouldn't have any room to throw any more out. And that rubbish is the entropy that gets, that gets created when you do some ordering in, in one place. And you need, to, you need to decrease the entropy of that system. You're decreasing the entropy of your house uh, by cleaning it, so you've got to increase the entropy outside. Well, here's how you would solve the problem. You would just continue to buy up the land around your house, and you would have, if you did that, you would have always have more room to throw out the rubbish into your yard. And uh, this is basically what the universe is not. Because the universe is expanding, it has more increasingly more room, uh, places to throw all that that uh, uh, disorder, all that entropy, when the when uh, it, it organizes some local system like a planet. So the second law wasn't violated, even though the universe apparently began in a state of total chaos, that, which is what modern cosmology tells us it did. And let me expand on that a little bit more, because this is also a very unique thing. I mean, say that science can have nothing to do with religion. Um, one of the difficulties I have as a scientist is trying to convince people who don't use a scientific viewpoint about the universe 
to come around to my point of view. What would you say is the single most effective strategy that you've used yourself to combat uh, superstition? Oh, that's a good question. Well, uh, first of all, I have to have to be very careful not to uh, uh, tell people that science is the, the final answer to everything. I have to, you know, it's easy to, to get very uh, arrogant about that because I do believe that science uh, is the most effective thing we've been able to come up with as, as a uh, as a means for achieving. Uh, uh, knowledge of the world, uh, but that science is not anything that we really don't do in everyday life. When we're when we're uh, examining any any issue, what we're doing is we're looking at the uh, at the world with our own two eyes, and we're we're evaluating it, and we're trying to make rational decisions about the things we're doing. And that's all. That science just kind of makes that a little bit more uh, precise and perhaps mathematical. So just don't. Don't act dogmatic about it. I try to be right. What I said here is, look, you show me the data, uh, and as a scientist, I'll have to I'll have to believe what the what the data uh, tell me. You show me the data that there are strings, and I'll believe it one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, uh, I first heard about uh, your book from the article in Time uh, between the debate about uh, with Mr. Collins and uh, Shadok. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I have a couple questions, uh, so I'll just roll them off. What did you eat for breakfast this morning? Uh, <laughs> and do you find that there's a, a, a curse that's uh, pointed upon you when you, you debate about the subject? Um, that, 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 that's drawn upon uh, Farabrand and uh, his debate with uh, other philosophers of science. And, uh, and dealing with the question about uh, at looking for the, the answers to why uh, rather than how? Well, I don't know. Was, all, I, all I can say is that I, I look at the data and, and, and try to interpret the data that uh, why questions are, are virtually impossible to, to answer, uh, why something is the way it is, even if I'm even sure it's a meaningful question, just like people are always throwing other things, what about consciousness and so on. Well, What's consciousness? I don't know what consciousness is. I've never seen it defined. And, and the same thing here. You, the question has to be formulated, for me at least, in a way that I can answer it in terms of, of what, where my expertise is. Although I do, I do have this adjunct position in philosophy, I still tend to think of things more as a scientist. And that is, again, what, is, what, is, uh, what does it imply about, about what we'll, we'll find when we do experiments? How is it testable? And uh, and rather than rather than uh, you know where did, what is what is the source of, of of everything? Everything could be from nothing is, is all as far as I can tell, and uh, and that's the answer to to the why. The why is just that's the way it is. Yeah. Uh, I'm very much an atheist, but I, after the lecture, I still have a few things that I'd like to challenge. First of all, uh, you were talking about the universe and how nothing defines the laws of physics, and yet 85% of the universe is made of uh, this unknown dark matter mm -hmm. or energy that scientists have absolutely no clue about that is actually in charge of, uh, well not in charge, but is the reason why the universe is increasingly expanding and not... Uh, wait, 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 wait. We have plenty of clues. Sorry? We have plenty of clues, we just don't know precisely what it is. We, for example, one, one, one model that seems to fit the data right now, I don't particularly like this model, is the model that it's a cosmological constant that was in, that Einstein put in the, his equations back in 1916 that has a repulsive, uh, it, it's a repulsive type of gravity, uh, perfectly consistent with all of the known physics. There's nothing, there's nothing in the, uh, in the dark matter or the dark energy uh, that indicates it's anything other than physical. We just don't know exactly what it is. As far as 